<laughs> Saturday, July 20th, 2019. Check this. I just picked the, I just grabbed these off of my plants out there. We got some chocolate devil tongues. Doesn't it look like a devil's tongue? Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, uh, as beautiful as it can be anyways. Look at that one. It's got little bumps on there, like little spikes. And these are the chocolate moruga scorpions. Check that thing out. Look at that. Just beautiful. It's got little spikes and bumps on it too. You see the little spike there? see if we can get that focused here and I don't have any of the habaneros in here but I I have a whole new plant coming it just started some yeah, I guess we can take a little tour I did uh, I got a lot of exciting stuff going All these leaves keep breaking off I don't know every time I come out here there's another broken off leaf but check that out got some little babies started there some little look at there's another broken leaf Where's a bigger one here we can see? There we go. Look at those. I got two of them right. I think it's the first two. Yeah, they're being stubborn. But anyways, there they are. Chocolate habaneros starting. There's one. We can see that one. And they, you can tell it's a habanero. They just shaped like them. I don't know. <clears throat> this one's probably the same thing. I'm not sure. Oh, my Dendrocalamus Gigantia seedling new shoot. I think that's, what, four, four days or three days? So it's doing really good. It's got its first leaf out and starting on its next one. And the thing I like about it is it's getting some real girth there. It's getting pretty thick at the base. I like that got some new pepper seedlings I just put these in starting to grow their second leaves and over here I've got a little tiny this is one of my clones it's putting out a little tiny shoot there right there not very big the polymorpha bambusa polymorpha it's got a shoot let's see that oh that shoots like six inches tall now wow look at that thing giant That's about five days old, maybe. Here's the plants I just uh, picked all the peppers off of. It's got more on there already. They just haven't got ripe yet. You want to pick them off of there before they're all ripe and falling off. Uh, and that'll help you produce more peppers. Here's a whole bunch of unripe ones, green ones on there, still coming. Yeah, there's like a, another dozen on there. Uh, my purple bamboo from seed this uh, this one over here got now, now it is kind of purpley looking now too I noticed the the sheaths on there are getting purple but it got this kind of like s hook in the top of it um, I don't know what happened we got a lot of rain and it maybe got blown and cracked over a little bit I was hoping maybe I'd get another shoot but these might only put out one this year um, oh, I know what I came over to see. My ginger. This is ginger right here. I've got two kinds. You can actually see it coming out of the ground right there a little bit. And I noticed yesterday there's another stem over here. So this used to be about as big as my hand. It's probably a little bigger than that now, but this all is connected. There's one big huge root under there <clears throat> and it was growing for quite a while. It didn't have any leaves on it and I went to plant a tomato plant in there and um, I hit this big chunk of ginger but it's got tops on it now. That's just regular ginger. That's just from the grocery store. I planted it and it started growing. I have another ginger and that's this one here and this is the Thai ginger, the quote unquote spicy ginger and if you break a leaf of that and crunch it up a little, it smells like, hmm, it's not that strong now. 
this thing's got a lot of water. It's pretty light green. I just put it over here in the shade <clears throat> because uh, it was getting a little too much sun, I think. But I separated this little piece here from the main chunk of root to start another <clears throat> cutting. And I think it's rooted in. It looks pretty good. I also put another one over here in the field. And you can see I have a very organic kind of garden going here. I got a pineapple there. I got some bamboo. And uh, here's some galangal here. That's the galangal, the spicy. And it's pretty much full sun. I do have this uh, cage around it to keep the uh, rabbits out of the bamboo. Um, and then I have over here some nice uh, cockle burrs. These, uh, these could do really well here. And some ragweed, of course. Got the nice ragweed. And, um, oh, here's some more lemongrass over here next to my other bamboo clone. If you break this up, mmm, lemony, really nice. You can rub that on you. Keep the mosquitoes off, too. Just rub that on your legs. Mmm, wow, it smells really good. And this bamboo clone doing really good still. Got uh, six feet there. All right, well, I had all this grass. I thought it was lemongrass, and uh, apparently it's just weed grass, so I had to pull that out of there. But now I got this spot open for a pepper plant, so that's good. Oh, and this, this right here is my macadamia nut tree. Yep, I got two of them. That one's doing pretty good. Not impressive. I mean, it does. It went through the drought and I didn't spoil it a whole lot. It looks like it's got some little tiny buds trying to come out there, little branches trying to start. I don't know if those are going to make it or not, but it sure did like the rain and it started growing some new shoots out of the top there. It's got, got three new tops there. We're kind of split. <laughs> so that's doing good. <clears throat> now, that's about four years old and they're supposed to produce seeds in four or five years I don't think it's quite ready yet but uh, yeah macadamia nut tree sustainable all right here this is kind of weird this is lemongrass mmm smells good it smells lemony and it's just kind of a rough you know, three four foot tall grass kind of coarse really really kind of hard and then we got this grass over here this grows you know all over the place it's just kind of a weed so it's kind of a thinner blade it goes does really good in the drought and it doesn't smell at all but it looks almost I don't know it looks a little it looks pretty close though. look at the bottom there it looks just like the lemongrass so if you get that growing in your Hot, you won't even notice it. You'll be like, oh, my lemongrass is doing good. And then if you check it, oh, we got a formation of planes up here. What the heck? Weird. Oh, and here's my giganteous clone from. Uh, uh, tropical bamboo gardens and nurseries now yeah this uh, seed thing I've been doing research in the seed and I found this Yunnan seed company and they ship through I can't pronounce it it's Chinese um, some import export limited company and they kind of specialize or they say they specialize in uh, bamboo seeds and um, nursery, uh, supplying nurseries, and and um, so they apparently are um, geared just for bamboo. And they list quite a few seeds, and they have Sinicus that they say they harvested in March of this year. So they should be, you know, good viable seeds. So I. And they're pretty expensive. They're 350 a pop for a seed. So I ordered 11 seeds and with shipping, and it was a little confusing because they sent me an email saying I had to verify um, 
how they were going to be shipped, but I thought I already paid for that, so I emailed them back, and I didn't get a response yet, but I did get a notice from Alibaba that they shipped. So my seeds are on the way from Yunnan uh, seed, bamboo seeds. So yeah, all my shoots are doing really good here. That one's finally up above the trees. That one over there has been up above for quite a while. Oh, this one over here is getting out of the palm tree too. So all those are like 16 feet or so. And of course my ones that were just three feet tall last year, I think uh, that's a 10 foot ladder there. So uh, most of those are at or gonna hit 20 foot any minute now. Mm, there's a nice half ripe chocolate scorpion the stem doesn't look too good on it so I might uh, might keep an eye on that oh let's go look at the bees oh better yet let's look at the worms I got a story about my worms I did something horrible now let's take a look in here see what we got it's been flooded a little bit but not I had it covered up and only got a little rain yet there's a nice eggplant that needs to get buried. And if you look in here, I've got some crab shells. And look how soft they are already. They've only been in there a week or two. Some of these have been up on the top. Crab shell, um, uh, oyster shell, or not oyster shell. Well, yeah, oyster shell too. You could, I wouldn't do too many because it's going to, they're kind of heavy and they break down really slow. But your crab shell and uh, lobster shell, that's what I was trying to say. Uh, those break down really quick and they put a lot of phosphorus in there and they promote the growth of chitins, K-I-T-E-I-Ns, I believe. And those are a little microorganism that help uh, defeat and kill your uh, um, nematodes, which attack your roots and do a lot of damage. Well, there's not too many worms over there. Got to stir this thing up. But I did a horrible thing. I uh, was out here and I had some ants. There's all the worms. I had some ants in here. Red ants were trailing in. And I was like, oh my God. And I thought it was just a little bit in one corner. And I started pulling them out and throwing them over the fence. But then I noticed they were all through the whole bin. They were everywhere in there. So I grabbed the only thing I had, my uh, sprayer. And I put some diesel fuel in it. I was doing some uh, purification by fire on some weeds and stuff. So I sprayed the corner a little bit and then the sprayer wasn't working really good and I ended up spraying quite a bit of diesel fuel throughout my whole worm bin. <laughs> yeah, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? It, it was, uh, um, like I said, a little extreme, a little more than I was planning on, but I kind of just got the whole surface a little bit and then where they were really bad around the plastic and stuff up here. It got maybe a little extra. There's a little spider in there. So I thought, oh my God, I gotta check this the next day and see if um, I killed all my worms or not. And I went in there and it was like I never even did anything. The worms were up at the surface. They were, it was almost like they enjoyed it. Um, there were no ants anywhere in the bin and the worms just didn't even really notice it. They were all over the place. So I, um, you know, let it sit there for another day or two, and then I stirred it all up, and here they are. They're doing great. Diesel fuel and worms. Who knew? Look at all those worms in there. Going after that crab shell. It doesn't matter. The crab shell breaks up anyways. Put a little azomite in here. A little A to Z. Um micronutrients once in a while that's good but yeah I need to stir this up really good it's been kind of wet it's really packed down in the bottom Ooh, that's where all the worms are there they are yeah I gotta flip this thing over let's go look at the bees all right here's my bees now, these aren't like uh, man, with a Chinese, um, Chinese girl, what's her name? Uh, the, the, 
Lizikwi. And I think it's Lizikwi. And we have got to be careful. I, I don't have any uh, gloves or anything on. No head net. Um, so yeah, this this is my bees. And this bottom box weighs probably. Oops. I just smacked one with my hands. Yeah, you want to be careful around my bees because they'll get a little uh, testy. Uh, anyways, this bottom box on here is like really full. There's probably 80 to 100 pounds of stuff in there. I mean, it's heavy. And then the top box has only got five frames in it. And two of those frames are getting pretty full and they're starting on a couple more. And um, it's got a queen separator in between. So it's all clean honey up above with no brood in it. So uh, a couple more months after, oh, that little bottom's open a little bit right there. I have to get in there. Whoops, another one's bouncing off of me. We don't want to push these guys very hard with no, uh, I, I am a, a little bit allergic to uh, bees, so I got some, whoops, oh, I got some steroid in there. Man, I'm getting all chewed up. Look at all those bumps on my leg. That's just from the uh, little no seams out here. So yeah, bugs are bugs are a little vicious here, not like in China. All those bees have stingers. And ow, what the ah, mosquito. So yeah, bees are looking good, working hard. Got a lot of uh, rain, so there's a lot of flowers out there for them to harvest. A lot of nectar. Um, I think the palm trees, which is probably their main source of nectar, um, they're going to be blooming. Well, they pretty much bloom just about all year round, especially in the summer when it's raining. So they'll have a lot to work on here. Oh yeah, since I was showing peppers, this pepper over here, that one's got a bad dead stem on it. We've got to pick that. This plant always, it must have been crossed or something when I from the seeds that I got. It always gets this orangish yellow kind of color. Whoops, let's see if we can get a shot of them. And they, once they start to get some color on them, they go bad really quick. See, that one's bad there. It's all soft. But if they start turning a little bit of yellow or orange and you pick them right away, they're usually good. They're fiery, fiery hot, and they almost always have liquid inside of them. So those are really... Oh, look, at there's a whole... There's some new ones coming up there. So, yeah, I bit one yesterday of the scorpion peppers and turned it upside down. I didn't chew it up very much. I just spit it out because that's enough. And um, so I bit the end of the scorpion pepper off. I tipped it upside down and juice came dripping out of it. Very juicy. Oh, I got some cotton growing there. My cotton always does good here. This cotton's ready to be picked. Oh, maybe I should go weave this into something. It'd be like uh, the Zeke and make uh, make some. Oh, there's there's the flower. See, cotton flower. Cotton. Where is it? I saw one here somewhere. Oh, there it is. There's one. There's the bulb. Once it gets pollinated, it looks like that. And then once that pops open, it, the shell breaks open like that. And you have all these little packets of fiber inside there. So there's cotton for you. I put that bamboo post up there. It's about maybe 10 feet tall. I put it up there so our uh, we got little miniature owls and they like to sit up on top of our tiki torches so I put that out there for the little owls because they get the mice and hope I wish they would get the moles I have a few moles I want to get rid of oh and if I look over there in the distance my bamboos hitting the skyline that's so cool there's a couple there that you can't see right by that tree. There you can see them. Those are going to be up pretty tall.
pretty soon too. All right, well, I'm going to take my cotton here and go build me a cotton gin and uh, gin this down, and weave it up, and make me in some, make me some jeans or something. Cut. <laughs> 